Today I'm going to show you how to paint a very easy watercolour starry scene. I'll show you how to paint this step by step. So let's get the brushes wet shall we? And let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is get a little bit of masking fluid. Okay, this is a PBO one, PBO drawing gun. I'm going to put a little tiny dot. <laughs> I might put two dots actually. Let's put one, put one around. I don't know, I'm going to go around here saying that. It's a blob of masking fluid. I'm going to put another one, put one down there as well, that'll do. I'm going to put another one around here, put it towards the top corner. So there's different ways you can do this. I'll tell you what you can do, you know. Especially when you're using masking fluid like this. Get something like a cocktail stick. <laughs> Load that, then tap it over the back of your finger, like so. To get extra little dots. There's other ways you can actually get the dots on here. You can splatter it with your finger and get an old toothbrush and use that, dip that into the masking fluid a little bit. You can flick it on there for very fine details. Or you can flick your cocktail stick like this to create extremely fine little tiny dots. You can just make them out, can't you? Get a little bit more, shake most of it off. So it's quite flexible, this cocktail stick, until it breaks. <laughs> which it will eventually. I'm going to flick this on all over the paper, just on this one side for now. There you go. And I want this to dry. Once it's dry, we can start adding some colours over the top. So that's just two methods of applying the masking fluid using a drawing pen or even a simple little cocktail stick. Yeah. Now you can have a variety of colours, any colours that you want to use really within a galaxy. Of course you can. You can go for purples, mauve, for example. Let's have some of that. Yeah, why not? And when you look at galaxy photographs on the old internet, there's a variety of different shapes, sizes, colours, patterns. And I think mixed in with that, I'm going to go for some opera rose. Lovely colour. Let's pop it in there. Just pinks it up a little bit, doesn't it? Blues. I'm going to go, first of all, with some indigo. That can go in there. Quite a nice colour in the go, it really is. And always make more than you think you'll need. I'm going to go with some phalo blue, or intense blue, or Windsor blue, whichever one you've got. Oh, that's nice. And for now, make all these mixes to a milky consistency. Not watery, not creamy, not thick, milky. I'm going to go for some French ultramarine next as well. Or ultramarine blue, whichever ones you've got within your painting kit. You know what, I'm going to go for a bluey black colour as well. Now I could use Payne's Grey, but you know it's a little bit bland, a little bit flat on its own. So I'm going to use a combination of two colours. And this time it's going to be indigo, we'll go for that one again. I'll make some more of this up off canvas, I've got plenty, okay? I don't wish to bore you. So indigo, to show you what it looks like, and some burnt umber. We want it more on the blue side. Okay, that's all nice and dry, but hey! Brilliant. What I want to do first of all is wet the background. And to do that, grab yourself a large brush. I'm going to use one by a company called Royal. And this is a really cheap brush. <laughs> I tend to try different brushes on a regular basis and I don't like buying expensive brushes. So Royal Soft Grip in a size 20. Yeah, not expensive. So I think it probably cost me about three pounds, something like that. I can't remember what it was now, but it wasn't very expensive anyway. So you want to wet the background a couple of times allowing the water to soak into the paper each time, okay? Just give it a chance to soak in. And don't rub it too hard, because if you do, what will happen? You'll start pulling off that masking fluid. And we don't want to do that. Not really, no. We've got an old posh. Now my board is on a slight angle here, probably something like, maybe, something like that, maybe? Yeah, about, probably 15 degrees, something like that. It's not too much of an angle, but just a little bit, and just helps the water to run down the paper at such as well. Okay, let's make a start, here we go. I'm gonna go in with our brightest color first of all, the mauve and the opera rose. Remember, all milky in consistency. I'm gonna start on, I'm gonna start on, I'm gonna start off down the bottom actually. Just down here, okay? Yeah, why not? Anyway, we'll do. Galaxies all vary, don't they? They really do. So you can make it whatever you want it to be. You really can. Change it, move it around, change those colours. Create patterns in the sky, create galaxies, whatever you want to do. 
Then I'm going to go for, what's our brightest blue? Let's go for that one there, which will be the French Ultramarine. Start from the top, then working your way down. French Ultramarine. Okay. Keep working it, working it, working it. I might continue that down the bottom. I'm thinking about putting a bit of a silhouette down there instead. So what I could do, I could put a little bit of that mixture there. Mix in with the French Ultramarine as it goes higher up towards the blue area. A little bit more just there. Look at that. Oh yeah, what a lovely colour. Oh, 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 oh. oh, I do like that. Allow it to mix into the paper. And if it doesn't mix that easily, give it a bit of a gentle persuasion. Right? Don't kick it or anything like that. Just, just say, hey, come on, get in there. Bit more blue. Apply that to the paper. Remember, it needs to be dark. Because it's sky. Well, it's the stars, remember. It's a dark sky. It's not black, but it's just dark. Then I'm going to go for the phalo blue. Now that's really bright. Are you ready for this? <gasps> oh, dear. That's really, really bright. I'm leaving gaps in between all the time. Allowing some of the other colours to show through as well. Bring it towards the middle. The key really is trying to maintain the wetness of the paper. Because if you have not been up this area for a little while for the top left hand corner, for example, you've kind of ignored it, not been there for you know quite some time, you find it will start to dry. I'm going to wash this brush out in a minute. And as it starts to dry, what will happen is that you'll end up with blemishes and blotches and marks all over the place. Not that it matters within something like this, I know. But if you want it to look as nice as possible, then I suggest what you do is keep working around the picture to maintain the wetness all over. Okay, let's go for the next one. That's the second one we did, which was the indigo. Pop some of that in. Preferably towards the top and maybe about a third of the way down, something like that. Again, leaving gaps in between. If you want to just pull a little bit of paint off here and there, you can do. You know, just by drying your brush like this on some kitchen roll, just taking off a little bit of paint in places. So you've got some lighter sections here and there. They'll blend as it dries, which it will. Which I want it to. But it's leaving little gaps or something different within the area as well. Then you can go for our darkest colour if you want to. And add a little bit of that in as well. If you remember the darkest colour, the indigo and the burnt umber, but more indigo than burnt umber. Just to allow it to be darker, more of a blue shade than anything. Add that in as well. Changing the way it looks, change the way it feels. Clean brush again. Then tease it all around, give it a tease. Move it around, soften it back a touch. That's it starting to dry down here. So what I can do, I can leave it alone if I want to, which I might do, you know. Or I could just add a little bit more colour over the top before the shine goes off that paper. You know, I just looked at this, you know, and I think what I might do is put another layer of colour over the top of that. It's nice and dry, just about. A bit of warmness in the paper here, but that will dry nice and flat. That's because I've got a block pad, which means it's glued all the way around. And because of that, it normally dries nice and flat anyway, which is really, really handy. So back to your size 20 or whatever brush you've got there. Big, big brush. I'm going to go straight into our lovely purple colour, you know. That Moven Opera Rose. I'm just going to apply it over the top of everything else. Now you've got to be careful here because it depends on the quality of the paper. Mine's sort of a mediocre quality. It's not too bad. You can start to move the paints from underneath. Yeah, I know. I know. So be careful with it. Just apply another colour of this over the top. I just want to warm it up a little bit more on there. And this will certainly do that. Now I'm going to water this down. Okay, water it down. Bit more colour in there. Bit more opera rose in there. And I want this to be quite dark eventually is what I'm looking for. So take your time with it, there's no rush. And get those colours on the paper. And then, again, let it dry. It's all about drying, really. It's being patient with the painting. 
Now please support my channel by clicking on the subscribe button down below and also that like button as well. At least by doing that, when I put another video on here on YouTube for you to watch, there's a good chance that you shouldn't miss it. Right, it should be just about dry, nearly dry, still a little bit warpy on there, but that will dry nice and flat, which it will. Now then, dry finger, make sure it's nice and dry though, okay? Dry finger and remove the masking fluid on the paper. It has to be dry. And already you can start to see, oh no, look at that, already a bit of a starry sky. Yeah, straight away. But there's much more to do yet, right? So bear with me on this, so stay tuned. We've not finished yet. Now then, white paint. So if I get rid of that one, I'm gonna get some opaque white paint. You can use white gouache, not a problem at all. Anything that's easy for you to kind of get hold of, stay. Now grab yourself a stiff bristle brush like this one. Also some water, just down the bottom here, out of the way. First thing to do, grab a little bit of paint and also some water. And then what you need to do is bring your finger back, like this. you can use an old toothbrush instead, by the way, if you wanted to, and then splatter over the top of the paper, you ready? But very lightly, don't bring it back too far. Just a little bit to begin with, like that. Then let go. And you can see straight away them fine splatter marks we've got on there. Ah, very effective, isn't it? Whoa, look at that. Brilliant. The key is not to overload the brush too much or the toothbrush, whatever you're using. Just be gentle with it. Don't put too much on. And there you go. Straight away, we've got more like a starry nighttime sky, just like that. Yay. Then what you can do, you can thicken this up a little bit. It needs to be thin enough so it can splatter. If it's not thin enough, it won't splatter. Then try that one. Yeah, a little bit too thick. So you can use a brush if you want to instead. So let's say, for example, this old Tintoretto. Tintoretto travel brush, there you go. Quite handy, that, isn't it? So you've got obviously the handle like that. Just move it around. Grab some water, grab some paint, nice and creamy. Then you can use that one to add in a few little circles and dots here and there. And you can even put yourself in a star constellation if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you, the big bear. So things like uh, Draco, Canis Major, Canis Minor. Um, well, I'm trying to think of all the different ones. Aries, yeah, that's one of them. Andromeda, the Andromeda Galaxy. <laughs> so you can put whatever you want in there. You really can. Orion, Taurus, the ball. And there's plenty more as well. So if you wanted to do that, put a constellation in there, then go ahead and do that. Put a little satellite in this guy if you want to. Entirely up to you. <laughs> I don't think I'd do that one though. Okay, so that's the splattering part done. Now the next thing I need to think about doing is putting a little bit of a silhouette down the bottom. And to do that, all I need to do, grab our dark colour with my size, what size is this one? Size two, my Tintoretto. And think about a basic kind of, I don't know, hill shape. It's going to be something like this. Shake your hand on purpose. Honestly, it is on purpose. Whoa. Hill shape, a few little trees here and there, anything like that will do. Just vary it. Don't make it look all the same all the way down. The same on this side as well. Fully load that brush up. Give it a bit of a wiggle. If you want it smoother, do a smoother line just to prove that I can do it. All right. <laughs> then fill in everything underneath. Just fill it in. Now this is more of a milky consistency, but you really need it probably creamy to make it very dark. And if you use probably lamp black on its own, it can look a little bit too flat. So you want a rich black really, rich dark colour like this one here. And that will do that. Oh, actually, believe it or not, there's one more stage that I want to go through. Really? Yeah. I'll give this a quick dry and I'll show you. So stay tuned. Okay, grab yourself a flat brush, anything like this will do. You can use a round brush. If you want to use a small one with a decent tip like this one here, like this Tintoretto. But a flat brush is really handy for this because what we're going to do is lift a little bit of paint off. Get a cleanish piece of kitchen roll. I always say cleanish. And you're going to pick a star. Pick a star, at least I will do, make a wish. No, pick a star. Move that out of the way, that's better. And we're going to create some rays coming from that star. All right, some bit of a light ray. Who is he anyway? Who's Ray? But you've got to think about getting these nice and straight as well. I'm losing the plot today, sorry about that. So nice and straight. 
This is why having a, a chiseled edge brush like this one here, flat brush, does help as well. You can use a ruler. Yeah, of course you can. I'm not going to today. Just gonna put a little bit of water, not too much on the brush though. I've loaded the brush, then I've kind of just wiped it, tapped it within my kitchen roll here to take off a little bit of that paint. Just down towards there, then dab it with your kitchen roll. And you end up pulling the paint off like this, see that? So keep going until there's just about enough come off that paper there. Like so. If it's too much, we can always tone it back down again with a little bit of paint. I can use my Tintoretto as well. That's going to give a softer sort of ray from the star here. So a nice light wash of water over the top, barely touching the paper though, like that. And then you can see already, look at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's much better than this one here. It's just too sharp really. Then we can do the same again and again and again. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna to cut to the next part, which will have this section completed. So here we go. I'm going to also go back to our lovely purple colour, but I've just had a bit more opera rose in there. Load that brush, give it a few taps on some kitchen roll. And then what I need to do is add a little bit of colour just inside this star. Yeah, just a touch of colour there. And we can do the same for some of these rays that come away from it, can't we? So touch those in with a little bit of colour. Now, when you add colour over the top of white, because obviously that's watercolour white, or opaque white, do that in one very light pass with the brush. If you go over it too many times, you start to blur that white paint. And if you do that, well, you just have to kind of give it a dry and then apply it again over the top. I know, because it can go a little bit muddy if you're not careful. I'm going to lift off a small amount of paint just around the outside edge of this now. Get my kitchen roll, give it a lift. Very carefully though, very carefully. And lift. It's all about tweaking it and playing with it and doing something that you want to do with this. You know, and see what you can create as you do so. That's all I'm doing here. And to achieve that glow, what I need to do, just lightly soften the edge of this light area. Just by, very lightly, extremely lightly though, going around that with a damp, clean, brush or cleanish brush in my case and then then you can go in with your purple color add that in and around this area here just touch it in there so a bit of a purple glow coming away from that star which then extends towards the rays as well now from quite a few silhouette paintings here on YouTube so if you fancy having a go at working on the silhouette painting, have a look at the link to the top right, okay? I'll see you there.